loves. Right, I have Chloe over today. She's visiting from Plymouth. Chloe is my daughter, for those of you that don't know. Um, and for those of you that are brand new to this channel, welcome. My name's Sarah. I am a qualified nail tech and educator. Let's get into this. So, um, we don't see Chloe very often because she works in Plymouth now. So, we are going to do a set of nails today because I know she's coming back in about five weeks. She wanted um, short almond hard gel with some pretties. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm going to push back her cuticles first. Now she's been wearing press on nails. So there is um, a film of adhesive that's built up on her nail plate. We need to remove that as well. But that will be part of the process. I'm just going to push back. She tends to nibble a lot. She nibbles. So her cuticle area is firm. You can see that it's really sticky. It's really hard. And there's lots to handle. Um, and you can see on the nail the shininess. That's that's the layers of adhesive as well. So I'm going to grab my e-file. I'm using the Melody Susie e-file. I've got loads of different Melody Susie e-files. I think I've got five. Um, but I chose this one because it's... it's um, just nice and lightweight and it was the first one I grabbed and it was fully charged so um you it's very quiet as well you can't hear it I'm going in a forward motion at about 1300 rpm and I'm using this I think it's called a flame bit but I can't remember and it's just you it's very gentle you can use it on your skin like to show clients and I'm just exfoliating as much as I can because you see that sticky non-living tissue. It's not visible unless you agitate it. So you're not going to know it's there. Um, so the best thing is to do something like this. If you don't, if you're not confident with an e-file, then just go over it with a um, scraping tool and it will agitate it. And you'll see this kind of chalky residue. That's what we need to get rid of because that's going to stop the product adhering. For those of you that already know that, I'm sorry I just taught you to suck eggs. I do apologise. Um, so we'll go in a forward motion centre to the left and then I'll switch to a reverse motion and um, do the opposite side and speed it up a little bit. I did that first bit in real time. This is sped up, just to show you. It's a really good way of getting down in those uh, lateral folds as well. There we are. After that, I'm going to switch to a slightly bigger bit. And I genuinely don't know the name of this one. It came in a kit and uh, I just know it's in my in my drawer. And I really like it. It kind of gets right in there. It's a bigger bit. It's not any coarser. It's just a bigger bit and it gets right in there. The first bit kind of lifts the non-living tissue away. And this one really starts to remove. And then if there's any bigger bits left... That this bit can't handle um, then I'll go in and nip them but this bit will get a lot of it away or you can use a bally bit as well so I'm going in with my nippers and just uh, removing anything that's going to hang in the way or that's sort of just there um, obviously not living because that will make someone bleed uh, accidentally it can happen I've done it a million times and especially if you've got somebody who literally has tissue that is like tissue paper so even if you've got hangy bits they just they bleed easily some people are like it depends on the skin type um but yeah and, and also you need to make sure your nippers are sharp if they're not you're going to be pulling i've used blunt nippers in the past i've bought them they weren't very good and yeah it's just it's it's worth investing in a really sharp pair and having more than one pair, because sometimes they just, you notice they're a bit blunt. It's good to be able to whip out another pair as well. Um, she nibbles around here. So I was just removing that for her, really. So she's not tempted to start nibbling it. And then you can see this kind of little build up there that I'm just nipping away at. There's not a lot of it, but that's where I'm going to be putting product. So I don't want the product to touch that because it, it just won't stick. And then I'm going to use um, a 180 grit sanding band. Um, it's at 1200 RPM in a forward motion. And this is because I know there's a, a adhesive all over the nail plate. So I need to get rid of that. You can see the outlines of it. I need to get rid of that and I need to buff the nail surface. Now this is 
on a low enough setting that I could hold it against my hand, the back of my hand. It won't hurt or anything like that. I'm being very gentle. I'm not applying any pressure. I'm just letting it whiz over the surface. We don't want to cause damage. Honestly, I've seen and experienced myself when I was younger the damage that incorrect use can cause where people have either a too harsh a grit or they have it wax up high, they hold it and they burn you and they file for, oh my God, I mean, there's, you know. But I used to just do this by hand, but obviously because I've got um, arthritis in my dominant hand, the least I use like nail files the better certain things just make it easier for me and this is one of them there we go i am just going to file over and reshape but i didn't film all of it and then i'm going to go in with some adhesive and my tips i had to resize pretty much all of the tips because her hands are smaller than mine she's an adult <laughs> but her hands are teeny teeny tiny so they were all resized and adapted to fit, but that's the beauty of these things, isn't it? The tips are so thin, you can just file a bit off, chop a bit off. And then once they're in place, I'm going to chop them down because we are going short this time. Um, when someone says I want really short nails, but I want them almond and I want them French and I want them 3D and I want crystals, you know, there's a lot to fit onto a small surface area, especially if they have small nails. But it can be done, and that's what we're doing today. So chopping them all down, they're going to end up shorter than this, really, because by the time I've reshaped and filed, which I'll do now, the whole purpose of doing this now is because it's much easier in the long run to get your shape perfected before the product's on the nail. If you wait until the product is on the nail, then you've got all that extra thickness and bulk to file away. Whereas if you do it, with just the, the tip on, see how quickly that shapes. It's so much quicker, easier, it's less work on your hand, your shoulder, your neck, your back. Um, and finish the song, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> so get it done now, get that shape perfected, don't rush it. It's worth getting this as bang on as you want. And remember, the product's gonna make it a little bit wider. So you wanna bring it in, if you're looking for a sleek, kind of star nail you want to bring it in now because that product will thicken up the overall look also if you're using hard gel obviously those hard gel babes of mine will know you've got to buff the surface of the tip as well we do not want a shiny tip thank you very much then once you're done with all your filing you are going to need to de-dust the life out of it we do not want any dust thank you very much wipe over with isopropyl alcohol and then i'm going in with the primer that fits with this system. This system is from uh, Dorota Palitska. I'm not going to say her name in an English accent because that would absolutely violate it. Although my attempt at pronouncing it correctly might also violate it. But this is the system I'm using. Um, Design Nails Fibre Gel in Perfect Rose. This colour is stunning. I had to take the audio out. Chloe was squealing. She was like... Ee! I want to eat it. It's so beautiful. It looks like Angel Delight. Um, so, yeah, she loved it. It's a beautiful colour. I'm going to scrub a really, really thin layer into all the nails. Scrub it right in to all those areas where you filed and it will act like a Velcro. We're just going to scrub it in. And then once they're all done, we'll stick them in the lamp. I've got an LED lamp. They're going to cure for one minute. Beautiful. Then I'm going to just put a little thin layer down. Do not cure it. I'm going to grab a big bead or a pearl. And I'm going to apply it. Now, I do not do the whole nail's worth of gel in one go. Um, because some people are sensitive to heat spikes. And when the product cures, there are there is a risk of a heat spike. I think you get it more in builder gels. That's what I've experienced anyway. Um, but just in case, I always kind of do it in two sittings because some people are more sensitive to things like that than others. Do the same on here. Um, yeah, I have a friend who I did her nails recently and she has builder gel and where she was going before, um, somebody, you get like a different person every time and one of the people just put the whole bulk of the builder gel on her nail 
Um, and it really caused a really painful heat spikes and she it was off-putting for her. So I don't want anyone to experience that. Even though I'm not like a working nail tech anymore, if I'm doing my family's nails, I don't want them to experience pain or discomfort at any point. Who would? I mean, if you don't like them, fair enough, but... I'll only do maximum two nails at a time, then whack them in the lamp for a minute. So when they're cured, I'm going to go in and apply another really thin slip layer and then grab my second coat of the hard gel, the fibre gel. There we are. So this is a file off system. It's not a soak off system, but it files so quickly. It's strong and durable, but like soft to file. It's a dream, absolute dream to work with. I have had a request to do some extreme uh, hard gel nails. So bear with, once I've got this sorted, I will get on with that. Um, I have to like pace myself. So I'm only doing really one set a week, whether it's like me or it will be the practice hand or it will be a friend or like family member. But I've only got two family members that have nails and one lives in Plymouth so unless I can convince my mum I keep telling her to have her nails done and she thinks that she's bitten them too much but I can reconstruct anything so once they're all cured I've removed the inhibition layer which is like a sticky residue using isopropyl alcohol on a lint-free pad and then I'm just going to grab my 180 grit file and file over this just to refine the shape and as you can see it files super super soft and super easy If I sound rushed doing voiceovers, it's because generally I am, because somebody needs me or wants to talk to me. So I've now filed them all and I'm applying top coat to the middle nail only because I'm going to do some 3D uh, rose kind of petals. Um, it's been ages since I've done that style of 3D, probably over a year. I'm using Euphoria Nails Hint of Mint. This is gorgeous, honey. And I'm just going to apply a bead. Now, Chloe's nails are so small. Um, this first flower... I'll show you how long it takes me in real time to press out the bead. Um, it was hard getting back on it. I, uh, I sort of doubted that I knew what I was doing and that led to me making mistakes. But on the second nail, I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing now. That's fine. Here's the back of my hand as I'm pressing out the bead. And then I shall... So I'll do this first petal in real time so you can see how painstakingly slow it can be. Um because you've got to go with the product as well. And as it's sort of setting at the right um, viscosity. And then I'll go in and do the rest of the petals um, slightly quickly, bit sped up a bit. So I can't remember what I was saying because then I got interrupted again. And I suspect that the puppy is just about to cry because Mr. B's just gone out to the shop um, and the puppy wants to walk. <laughs> so he's probably going to stand at the door and cry in a second. If not, then he must really love me. Teddy, come here. He's beautiful. Um, anyway, pressing out the petals. It looks awful at the moment, but it will get better. You can save it. Don't worry. I added an extra bead here just to start giving it that more rounded look. And then I'll go into the centre with a, with a bead and I'll let that set up right in the middle. And then I'm going to literally poke my brush in the middle, make a little donut hole and start spreading that out. And then break off one of the edges and curl it round so it looks like a continuation. And it kind of just saves it. It's not the perfect flower, but I think it's lovely. And uh, Chloe loved it, and that's all that's important. So just curl it round on itself. And then we decided, oh, we want something sparkly in the middle. So we're using Glass Slippers by Smiley's Glitter Store with a little bit of Madame Glam top coat. And we're going to boop it, boop, right in the middle. He's not cried. He's just sat at the door. This is weird. And then we're going to do that on the other flower, which this is the flower I prefer out of the two. And um, then we're going to top coat that again. And then I'm using Madame Glam's New Quest because it matches Hint of Mint. Isn't it a perfect match? So um, I'll do that in a second. 
going back to this, I'm going to apply some crystals. The crystals she chose were a lot smaller. This chaton shape was a lot... Is it chaton? No, I can't remember. I can't remember the shape. Nevette, sorry. Nevette, that's what it is. I didn't have any Alina crystals in this size, so we wrangled my old box of Swarovskis, of which I have thousands, actually. And um, we've used Swarovskis for this because that was what I had that she wanted. Um, and I'm not adverse to using them. I've got so many of them. I was going to sell them because I thought I'd never be able to do nails again. But I'm glad I didn't sell them now. Look how sparkly they are. Oh my God. I'm going to do that on the other nails and then we're going to do this little micro French. Don't you think a micro French on an almond looks fantastic? I would love to know your opinion on the old micro French. Also... Just let me pop this picture in the corner and tell me, would you like me to recreate this set? Um, a nail tech friend of mine who is extremely talented did them. Then I realised I didn't film all the top coating because I was rushing to get finished. Um, so I've only got the top coat of the pinky. I do apologise. And the pinky on the other finger. It was because um, we were having a family meal and I had to get finished and done. So here's the top coat. It's Madame Glam's No Wipe Top Coat. Obviously, it's the only gel I really use is Madame Glam. So um, that's that. Here's the final uh, set. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you want, to want me to recreate that set or if there's any other ideas you want me to do. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!